as you would on internal medicine. The problem is that you have to learn a lot of the other information on your own, meaning you have to be self-motivated. For example, differential diagnosis, usually you go around with the staff, with the medical staff, and they'll ask you, so Dr. Colin, what is your um, differential diagnosis on this patient that has uh, hematuria or is bleeding in his urine? So, you know, you'll start coming up with some differentials, and then he'll say, well, how about Tylenol? Tylenol toxicity, you know, or something like that. And then, well, you know, that can cause. And so you, you, you philosophize a lot about medicine, and I think that's great. You learn a lot, but in neurosurgery, it's not like that. Neurosurgery, it's, you know, you do it, you know what the patient has, and that's it. You get it done, and, and you continue. Go right to the operating room. So it's different. It's almost a different philosophy in life that you, you, you take. In, in, in other, other specialties, non-surgical specialties, it commonly you, you, you discuss more on, on, on the medical aspects of life. How, are the, how is the patient doing socially? Is the patient married? Does the patient have any kids at home? You know, so these are... Are there stairs that the patient will have to climb when he's discharged from the hospital? Things like that. But usually in the morning, when we round, we ask all these, these questions to the patient. We don't have to talk about them too much. We just ask the patient, and we, we kind of carry on. And so I think it's a really big difference in medicine from surgical specialties, usually to non-surgical specialties. And I think both are great, and I think medicine needs both to run. But on the same token, it's up to you to decide what you would like to do in life. And um, I think that that's a very good question in terms of you know how how each one differs, and um, basically the challenge is what made me want to do neurosurgery. And I, I couldn't, and I would get tachycardic if I would sit there listening over and over to someone asking me about a particular differential diagnosis. So, but it's all good. Was it just your interest in neuroscience that made you decide neurosurgery instead of general surgery, or was there some other reason? Um, there was. I, my parents, it's a big story, but we used to have a hardware store, and we used to have a cabinet shop, and I loved woodworking. And um, I love being creative with my hands. And in neurosurgery, it, it, it was uh, an area where I can incorporate my neuroscience, the challenge in life, together with something that I would actually do with my hands. And um, I love operating. And so I think that you probably want to make that decision for, for you, are you good with your hands? Have you always been good with your hands? You know, even maybe playing Lego. I don't know. Yeah, that's that's um, it's difficult to to try to decide that without. Has anyone ever had any lab experience? No, like formal lab working with animals, things like you have. Yeah. What what was your take on that? Um, it was fine once you got them under. Oh, under anesthesia. Okay, and how about you? Yeah, I mean, I guess I, I guess I did do it for a very long period of time, six mm -hmm. months or something. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, kind of working with my hands, and I guess mm -hmm. I can somewhat relate to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It kind of comes with joy. Mm -hmm. But that was mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. You were going to say something. No, no okay. okay. Yeah. So I, I think looking back, um, perhaps on my earlier experiences in life, just like you relate, both of you, to me. Um, it helped to solidify my decision to do neurosurgery. Of course, I could have said uh, general surgery, but, you know, I'll be very truthful. I, I don't like poop, and so I shied away from that area. Um, another reason is because the... The life of in general surgery is it's very different. The, the the questions that you ask the patient it doesn't really re require for you to think as much as you do when you do a neurologic exam from when you do a belly exam, and so 
that's basically what led me more towards neurosurgery. I, I know I have a biased, uh, <laughs> my wife is signaling from the background like this, but no, that's really not, <laughs> it's not all, it's not all that. It's not all that. You know, um, you probably can make a little bit more money today than you would doing another specialty, but in general, medicine today is really, you don't really make much money. Let's face the fact. You really don't make much money like you used to before. Before, you could make a lot of money. And a neurosurgeon before used to make even more money. You know, and, but today, a neurosurgeon doesn't make as much. And maybe some of you might say, so how much do you make as a neurosurgeon? Or how much can you make as a neurosurgeon? So um, the salary ranges, and you know, I, I get offers all the time at home, I would say from like 500,000 to like 1.2 million. And I think it all depends, again, how much do you want to work? You know, because if you, go ahead. I just, so yeah. what is the <laughs> 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 No, that's good. I, yeah, I, I have to be above the 1.2 million. That's why I throw them all in the garbage. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think it depends how much you really want to work. And a lot of, a lot of these places, you have to be very careful even when you, you sign. Usually residents don't look into all this. I love reading a lot. And so you have to be very careful when you, you're going to sign a contract because usually they expect you to produce, like your first year, 75% of the salary that they're going to pay you. And if not, you have to give them back the money. So let's say if you don't know anybody, you just started in a place and like you have really no patients because you don't know it's whoever they refer to you and usually they to be honest they give you the crappy patients first you know those with lots of back pain those with lots of you know complaints and say let's throw them all on Dr. Colon and and then afterwards as your reputation builds then you start getting your own patients referred from other you know family physicians and so forth but if you don't produce the 75% that is expected, they will take back the money from you. Meaning, they will, if, say if, if you generated, um, I don't know, $200,000, they're going to say, well, Dr. Colin, 75%, we're going to have to take like another 200000 from you. And so you want to be very, very careful, especially when, you, when you're done with medicine. I know it's all, it's all very cool. But um, you got it's a lot, a lot more than just medicine, just learning in med school. Med school's great, and uh, I remember when I was in med school and I was in your seats, you know. But it's, it's a lot more than just medicine. And I would recommend joining and learning what the AMA, I'm sure everyone knows the AMA, has to say on malpractice, on contracts. And when everyone's done, you have to learn all that stuff and kind of incorporate that into your life. Another thing that has been very, very daunting, even as a resident, has been all the CPT codes that you need to learn. And CPT codes now, at least in neurosurgery, <clears throat> you are required to put a CPT code, and these codes basically are from the government, and it's how reimbursement occurs, and I won't go into that, but basically it's for you to start learning as a resident how you need to codify all your surgical procedures. Say I'm in a case tomorrow with Dr. Guthikanda. So let's say it's a transphenoidal case, right, through the nose, right? We're going to do a pituitary tumor. So you have to find out which codes are what, and then you have to put those down and document those, and they go into a website where when, you're, when you graduate, they want to look at everything that you've done, and they look at all your CPT codes and everything like that. So in a way, it's, it's, it's good learning experience for you, but it's also difficult for the resident who really doesn't have much time, and you're, you're like going through all these codes and trying to figure out what, what's what. But you know, at the end, it'll help enormously, and I know it will, so that's why 
I really don't complain to anybody but you guys. <laughs>